In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can write our own custom Keycloak code on top of the framework that Keycloak provides. By default, Keycloak is designed to cover most use cases without requiring custom code, but sometimes we might want to write our own custom code. Uh, to achieve this, Keycloak has a number of service provider interfaces for which you can implement your own providers. So on this screen, you can see that I'm on the provider info page, and these are the default providers that Keycloak comes with out of the box. So we have a free marker provider, we have a verified email provider. We have all these functionality or features that are provided by Keycloak uh, out of the box. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and implement a custom provider for an event listener. And this is what I am looking for. This is what I'm going to be creating a service provider interface for. Now, what I want mine to do is that I want any time a user is created, I want to um, print out or log that user's information in my log. Now, this is a feature that you can use to do other things that are more complex. Maybe you want uh, to send a payload to a different API every time a user is registered or a group is registered. So that's where some of this customization comes in handy. All right, so there are a couple of steps that we'll need to accomplish for all this to come together. The first thing is that we need to implement provider factory and provider interfaces. And then we also need to create a service configuration file. And then once that's done, we need to add the SPI to our Docker container because I'll be using uh, Docker for this demo. Now, when that's done, uh, when you run Keycloak or start Keycloak up, we'll have to come into the admin console and then actually enable this custom SPI. And then from there, once you create a user, we should be able to see the, the user details getting logged in the Keycloak logs. Okay, so let's find those two interfaces in the Keycloak uh, documentation. So what I'm going to search for is event listener provider Keycloak. And here we have it. It's what I want to implement for the provider. And then I'll do the same, but for a uh, factory. And here we go. This is the one I want to uh, implement. I already have uh, the skeleton of the provider and provider factory ready. So this is my provider, it's my factory. So let me just start from the factory and show you what I did. So I implemented the event listener provider factory and the other thing I needed to do before adding this was I had to add the dependencies that I needed for Keycloak, which are these three. They're the ones that you'll need to implement. Well, these are the ones you'll need to implement the provider and provider factory. So once I added these in here, um, I was able to, I just came and refreshed my Gradle. Um, they popped up in my dependencies and I was able to reference them here. When that was done, I came and now created this provider and the provider factory and the provider factory basically just does one thing. It creates the user registration provider. There's other methods here that you can implement, but I just left mine um, blank. Or oh, the other thing I added was this provider ID, which is the ID you're going to see in the Keycloak admin console. So I just named it custom user registration so that I can identify it in the admin console once we deploy this to Keycloak. So this was a provider factory now for the provider there's only um three methods it's supposed to uh, implement or override so the one i'm interested in right now is the admin event uh, boolean include uh, representation method because i'm going to be listening for an admin event for user registration this is not going to be on the client side this is not going to be what the user facing um side of the of Keycloak is this is on the admin side in the admin console. That's why I put this in here. The other events that are non-admin, you'd implement them in here. Now, I want to listen for user creation or user registration event. So what I did was I'm listening on this event and I want to check that is the event, first of all, a user event. And then in addition, is it a user creation event? That's why I got create. And the way I found these um, strings from was I came to the resource type and you can see a whole list of resources here and user was one of them. And then same thing for operation type, came to operation type and saw all the operations that are possible. So that's how I picked it, picked those two uh, strings. Now we need to just print something out to ensure that, or to verify that our admin event is being called. So in this event uh, object is a get representation method that's going to print out the JSON representation of our user payload. 
So when a user creation happens, there's a JSON payload that's generated, and that's what I'm going to print out. You'll probably have things like your first name, last name, a lot of the details that you filled out in the Keycloak admin console. So I'll just do a quick log message. Just get something like that. And I will call get representation. That's it. So now when we run this, um, oh, and this event listener is triggered, we should be able to see the details that are in the representation. We also need to create a service configuration file. This file has a specific set of criteria it needs to meet. One, the folder name. The file must reside in a folder called services, which is a subfolder of the meta inf folder. So here I'll go ahead and create the meta inf folder, and then the subfolder is services. A note, I've put this in the resources uh, folder here. Since I'm using Spring Boot, everything that I put in this resources folder is going to be at the root of the class path. So we have to make sure that this meta end folder is at the root of the class path. That's why I put it in here. And here, this appears as a dot, but it's actually a folder. So if I change the view here and come to resources, which is a folder. So this is just a result of the way I have uh, my project set up. All right, so now we have the two uh, folders that we need. Next thing is we need to create a file, uh, the server uh, service configuration file. And this file has to have the name of the event listener provider factory that we are creating. It has to be the fully qualified name. So in this case, we're implementing the event listener provider factory, which is located at org.keycloak dot events uh, dot event listener provider factory that's the name of the file and then it, the contents of the file are the classes that implement this interface in our case our class is user registration provider factory again this has to be the fully, fully qualified name so if i come back here and type in com and you have a um, autocomplete so i'll just type that and that's it so now we have this and this is what ties in everything in the spi let's go ahead and build the jar itself so i'm just going to run gradle in build and this outputs the library of the jar in the libs folder now i want to take this jar since this jar is on my local host hard drive it's going to be no good because my Docker Compose or my container cannot access it. So I'm going to move it to, into a folder and then mount this folder as a volume or bind it as a volume. And then that way it will be able to be accessed from the Docker container. All right, so I have this script here. Well, I could easily just copy and paste this in here and then bind the volume. Um, but if you want to automate that, you can add it to a script such that when you run the build, it's going to um take that and put it in this providers folder and then you know you don't have to worry about it so let me come to my build folder here libs i'll just copy this for now add it to the providers yep just call it that and then now i have this in here so next i need to add it to the volume of my Keycloak demo, because this is the Keycloak key clock that I'm running. So I need to add it to, that's how you add it to Keycloak, is that you have to add it to a specific location. And this location is also specified by the Keycloak documentation. And there is a providers folder. So what I'll do here is I'll add another volume from my providers. And what I want to do here is bind it to opt so now this my provider should be able to be now accessed by keycloak and so when i run uh keycloak admin console i should be able to see it in the admin console let me go ahead and log into the keycloak admin console and see if our custom spi shows up
So I was logged out, so let me just log back in. Uh, this is a list of providers. It was an event listener provider, so event listener. Yep, so we see it here, it's one place. Now, this doesn't mean that if I create a user now, it's automatically going to um, log, what, you know, it's going, it's going to use this uh, provider. It's not going to do it. I have to explicitly add this as an event listener. And the way I do that is I come here to the realm settings, come to the events. I want an event listener here and we see it's in the drop down, so I add it there. So once I've added it there, now it's actually active and then I have to save it. So it's been updated. And now when I create a user, hopefully we should see the logs saying, you know, our first name and last name for the user I create. Let me go ahead and create a user to verify that a custom user registration SPI is actually listening for user registration events. Okay. okay, now let's check the key cloak logs to see if our representation has been logged. And indeed, we see it here. So our SPI was successfully uh, enabled and we're listening to the events for when a user is created.